everyone. My name is Andrei Baradin, and together with Dmitry Smal, we are going to talk about unified point in time recovery in the cloud. So, we work for Yandex Cloud, and we are doing managed Postgres, managed MySQL, and managed MongoDB, and many, many other managed services for databases. And what's different about Yandex Cloud? Is it just one more uh, cloud provider? Mm, yes, probably so, but there is an import important thing that our biggest customer is Yandex. Yandex is a Google of Russia or a very big uh, internet company. For example, Yandex Mail has about one petabyte of managed Postgres and servers, one uh, million requests per second. Uh, many other Yandex services live in managed Postgres, for example, Yandex Taxi and uh, some car sharing applications, food delivery, self-driving cars and many, many others. In total, we have about uh, 6 petabytes of uh, Postgres, uh, serving 3 million requests per second. We also have MySQL, managed MySQL, uh, based on Percona build. For example, it's employed by uh, Yandex Direct. Uh, and we have about uh, 400 terabytes uh, as of 2021. Uh, so for us, somewhat less is more. So uh, if we uh, make Postgres a little faster, for a few percent faster, we instantly save hundreds of um, thousands of CPU cores to us. And we want uh, our service to be as efficient as possible. That's why we can contribute to open source a lot. And uh, uh, we really want to make uh, tools that are very efficient in the cloud. And every database needs a backup. You want your data to be safe. And uh, for us, uh, simple mantra is uh, cheap backup, fast restore. But uh, if we discuss things in more details, uh, there is a lot of uh, <coughs> sides of this saying. Uh, we need scalable, reliable, efficient and fast uh, database backups with uh, changes to be able to restore in a point in time. What is scalability for us? Uh, this means that the uh, size of a cluster uh, can change online from 10 gigabytes to 10 terabytes and uh, number of CPU changes and num of number uh, amount of RAM changes and uh, we actually cannot spill anything on disk. We cannot buffer data on disk because it's uh, just best decision and because uh, disk which is um, like designed for for database, not for a backup. Uh, this is a usual topology of our uh, cloud cluster. Here we have a primary instance, which archives changes uh, to some object storage. Uh, and uh, we have a synchronous or a quorum replication and uh, least utilized uh, standby archives uh, backups to, to network storage. Uh, efficiency is about resources and which resources we do want to save. Actually we don't want we don't bother much about storage space because hard drives are usually cheap and S3 is somewhat cheap. Uh, but we do uh, care about CPU usage during a uh, backup because we don't want a uh, backup to interfere with uh, production load. And we really care about network bandwidth because uh, mm, uh, network bandwidth and disk bandwidth are also crucial resources for your database to operate properly. What is the reliability of uh, database backup? There is actually mm, a lot of uh, things but first of all you want to be able to monitor are your backups okay you want to be able to check that you have every file you need and uh, it, it's best when you can uh, validate your backups by uh, testing that they can be restored and used uh, as a consistent database uh, 
Actually, reliability is somewhat about information security too. You want encrypted data, uh, database backup. Uh, and uh, in fact, reliability is, is about human error. You want uh, everything to be automated and you want to um, unify approach to the different databases. Uh, sometimes uh, people tend to measure performance of uh, database backup, how, how fast you, do, you are doing a reserve copy. But it's really not that important. You want cheap backups that do not interfere with workload and what you want is fast recovery. But fast recovery is also not an easy to understand term because you maybe you would like a fast recovery of a database at any point for uh, analytical purposes. Sometimes you need a fast uh, restore uh, for uh, creating a node in high, highly available cluster to start streaming replication. Or sometimes you want a restore to a specific point in time. And all three cases must be as fast as possible. And few things that are not acceptable for for database backups. We don't want to hold any logs because uh, we want on, really want online backup because we don't know when uh, the peak of the load will happen, and we cannot afford data loss at, uh, at any circumstances. We want uh, as much as possible protection. We want to have as much po protection as possible. So, when we were designing a uh, database as a service for Yandex, uh, we discovered that the uh, ecosystem of database backups in Postgres is really huge. There is a, it's rich, there is a lot of different very good uh, backup solutions. And uh, we found out that uh, there is a solution which is called VAL-E and it's just fine but not efficient enough. Uh, and there was starting project VALG. Uh, it was started by Citus Data, which now is part of Microsoft. And uh, we decided to contribute, and now we contribute a lot to VALG development. Uh, it's a very simple tool. You can just copy it from uh, our GitHub. It is truly open source. We would welcome any pull request. We will try to fix issue if you have. Uh, and uh, we are happy that uh, <laughs> uh, you can fork it if you want. Uh, backup. Oh, VALG is a simple uh, CLI tool. For example, here we call VALG with backup list command. Uh, VALG can be configured by uh, environment variables or by config. And it's really simple. Here we see that uh, we have uh, access keys for our storage and nothing else is required to list our backups. The same way we can uh, try to make our uh, backup copy. We call VALG backup push uh, on our uh, Postgres cluster, specifying where is a where, uh, where are files of a database. Uh, if it's not configured properly, Properly, VALG will complain that you need to uh, enable archive mode and uh, set archive command uh, to be able to restore uh, consistent backup. Keep in mind that in Postgres, uh, the database backup is not consistent without uh, necessary VAL files. So, normal database backup is just a copy of a database, probably inconsistent as in Postgres and uh, history of changes or in case of Postgres it's well files, right ahead login files uh, they are necessary to restore to consistent state and with well files you can restore at any point. But the problem is uh, changes are sequential in case of many databases and uh, we want uh, to apply them as fast as possible to be able to recover as possible. It's important for our LG. So we designed data copies, delta copies. Uh, delta copy is a, so, something like digest of while, but actually it's uh, taken from a database. When we read a file of a database uh, and uh, 
save only things that have changed. What is important about the delta copy is that we do not copy block that were changed many times. Uh, we do not copy them many times, but copy just once. And we can apply delta copy in parallel. Delta copy is just a copy of pages uh, that uh, were changed uh, between uh, backups. So if you want if you have a full backup for Sunday and you want to restore uh, for Thursday, you have like one base backup for Delta backups and probably a few hours of uh, or while to replay. And uh, all three parts will take the same time of a restoration. Uh, actually, data flow in a mm, cluster which is employing VALG is quite complicated. We have delta files which are digests uh, of, uh, of uh, some sets of VAL files, uh, but uh, it's quite easy to set up. Uh, you just need to set up archive command, restore command on your standbys, and uh, eventual backup from, from a standby. Some unique Postgres features which are not implemented for other databases yet. For example, we have a backup for Ketchup. If you have a primary and a standby which is lagging long before, like say, months or many days um, after primary, and you want it to catch up with a primary, uh, you can uh, get LSN logical sequence number which is a position in write ahead log from your standby archive delta backup from this LSN and this then turn off your database and apply this backup over uh, standby and it will catch up with your primary instantly and will be lagging just the time of uh, taking delta and applying delta which should be quite small feature that is not there yet is the automation of uh, backup push quorum. Uh, if your topology changes uh, online, you add new standbys and uh, remove new standbys, uh, you need to schedule, schedule uh, backup from a list loaded um, standby. Uh, and you need to coordinate all uh, nodes and it's not implemented in VLG yet. You have to pick, uh, you have to call uh, backup push on your own. Uh, when uh, working on VALG, we have had some problem with um, data transformation, like compression and encryption. For example, uh, we used most lightweight codec LZ4, and it's implemented in pure Go, but in fact it was implemented in <laughs> Assembler. And actually that's good, it f it's fast enough. Uh, but uh, from time to time we detected that uh, LZ implementation of LZ4 was not uh, compatible with its different versions. Uh, so if we find some something similar, we surely fix uh, help to fix and contribute fix to maintainers. Uh, we tried to use LZ May. Uh, this is a quite efficient algorithm, but it's it it consumes too much of a CPU. It uh, it compresses Postgres like three or four times better than LZ4, or maybe even six times better. But it it takes all your CPUs, and um, most of the time it's not acceptable. Uh, then we used the the Z standard. Uh, it's great codec with. Uh, an operator frontier, which means it provides a good trade-off of compression and CPU usage. But we found out that it was corrupting data and had to refuse to use it. Uh, it was fixed a few years after uh, we decided to remove support for the standard. But unfortunately, um, now we don't have the standard in, Bro in uh, VALG. But we have broadly Broadly is fine. We uh, do not have any problems uh, using it, but uh, it's really hard to develop using Broadly. So Bro Broadly is optional and uh, removed from default uh, developer build because it's implemented in C++ and there is a complex uh, linkage with Broadly. 
uh, we use OpenPGP implementation uh, of uh, PGP to encrypt uh, backups and uh, history files. Uh, and we found that there was a bug and we contributed a fix for this bug, but <laughs> unfortunately Google recently dropped its support for crypto package uh, and, and accepts only security fixes. Uh, we have uh, encryption with Lipsodium, which works just fine, but has the same problem as Bratley does. Uh, it, there, there is a quite different, quite difficult uh, build system, and uh, on in developer build you usually don't have Lipsodium. Uh, there is a common conception of something which which is push based and pull based for example git push and git pull or you can have a push based and pull based uh, optimizer in database uh, or you can uh, have a e stream or o stream in c++ and there is the same um, dualism in uh, golang uh, you can have reader and writer and this is this both are different interfaces uh, and when someone designs a data transformation library, they, uh, they implement codec as reader or as writer, and uh, decodec decoder as writer or as reader. And they are not always compatible, so we have to come up with a generic way to convert, uh, for example, reader uh, encoder into writer encoder, and vice versa. We discovered a nasty bug in uh, read full implementation of I.O. library that it can hide error in some cases when you have read enough. Uh, what's what is bad about this is that it can hide mm, it can hide from you a network error. For example, you are reading page by page file from a network, then you have a, a end of stream because network connection was broken and this uh, routine in Golang will report you that okay this is just the end of a file and uh, actually this is not acceptable because uh, we tr uh, do our best to prevent uh, possibility of uh, restoration of inconsistent backup uh, for example in Postgres uh, we place control file only if we are sure that this is a whole database everything was restored without any error uh, this is ensured that you cannot start database if it's not consistent uh, actually there is important thing to store bytes in the backup system and we started with s3 implementation simple scalable storage what can be better uh, and first problem that we encountered that uh, in fact S3 has its own cryptography and before we saw that uh, data transformation is orthogonal to um, data storage but in fact it's not but that was not, was not biggest problem with S3 we encountered that list objects uh, have two different implementation in uh, API you can have a uh, list object and list objects v2 and different storages, different implementation uh, have different list methods. Some uh, some storages do not support list objects, and some storages do not so storages do not support list objects v2. Uh, so we have to switch between both implementation. But that wasn't biggest problem either. Biggest problem was that S3 uh, specific infiltrated through all the code every piece of LG was dependent on s3 interface interfaces and then we decided to refactor storage implementation into one library and now everyone can reuse our library which takes uh, implementation of different uh, cloud storages and abstract it into LG storage library and now we have for example Google Cloud uh, support, uh, which uh, have no multi-parts, and uh, this, cause, this causes a lot of problem with retries. When you uh, try to save a big file of probably few gigabytes, 
uh, you uh, inevitably can face some network outages or restart of proxies inside of GCP uh, and you want to handle it so somehow uh, and you don't want to restart from the very beginning of a file uh, because you cannot buffer anything on a file system or database and we had to implement multi-parts so we uh, upload a big file in small chunks of 20 megabytes and then concatenate the, them within uh, Google Cloud Storage. Uh, KubeDB uh, contributed for, to us Asia problem. Sometimes we have the problem with Asia, but KubeDB folks fix it for us. It's, it's great. <laughs> this, is, this is truly the power of open source. Now we have a support for file system backup and everything seems fine but it caused less of a, uh, it caused for us a lot of headache with uh, <laughs> file system um, fi uh, file names uh, we have a support for swift storage but we don't have problem with this problem no no one is using swift storage and uh, uh, last but not least we have as ssh and scp support because uh, our S3 is implemented on top of Postgres and we want to be able to backup this Postgres but uh, we cannot backup it into S3 because S3 is uh, cannot backup to itself so we have to implement SSH backups too as you can see we have a lot of problems for infrastructure uh, of uh, of LG for Postgres and we decided that it would be good to uh, use this infrastructure for other databases too and now Dmitry will tell you about it thank you hello my name is Dmitry and I'm going to talk about some problems we encountered during implementing point-in-time recovery for MySQL and uh, Microsoft SQL Server in Yandex Cloud. As Andrew said, Valg is pretty handy tool uh, for archiving Postgres. That's why we decided to use it uh, uh, with uh, with a lot of uh, data compression methods and uh, a handy command line interface. And we decided to use it to archive also my SQL and uh, SQL Server. Uh, at the beginning, everything uh, looked uh, pretty uh, pretty simple. Uh, my uh, my SQL is a typical relation relational database, so it has uh, some data file and some kind of log and uh, all we need to do is just to upload it to the storage and uh, here we go but uh, there are a lot of differences uh, from Postgres uh, and the first one uh, we found it's storage engines uh, the MySQL use uh, different storage engines with uh, different data formats uh, and every storage engines need a, a separate backup tool to deal with it. S uh, even if we are working with one, uh, the most popular engine called INADB, uh, there are some problems, uh, such as uh, the write-ahead log uh, called redo log is circular in in, a, in, in INADB. Uh, it means that uh, INADB does not create new log files. Uh, it uses the same uh, log files again and again and again. And uh, it's very difficult to upload uh, such log uh, to the storage and use it for point-in-time recovery. The next problem is that uh, MySQL does not have uh, archive command. It doesn't care about uh, log archiving archivation at all. So we need to uh, upload uh, data using uh, external scheduler su such cron service. Uh, but 
MySQL has another log called binary log that is more suitable for, uh, for point-in-time recovery. Uh, okay, let's begin with a base, base backup. Before uh, archiving logs, we need to archive uh, the main database. Uh, here we have two options actually. If our database is small, we can use uh, MySQL dump tool uh, to create logical backup. But uh, as long as our database uh, grows, uh, it's no longer no, an option because MySQL dump will lock all the database and MySQL uh, will become read only actually. That's why we use uh, extra backup tool. Uh, Thanks one, once again for Percona for this great tool. Uh, extra backup can create physical uh, backup of the whole MySQL server without uh, making it read only. So we uh, use extra backup to create base backup. Uh, then we uh, compress and encrypt uh, data with wall G and uploading it to the storage. And then we upload it to storage. Uh, but uh, at this uh, point we have just a simple backup. But we are going to implement point-in-time recovery, so we need to uh, upload some kind of log. A redo log uh, is not suitable for this purpose. But uh, MySQL has another kind of log called binary log or bin log. What is uh, binary log? It's log used primary, uh, primarily for logical replication. We can mm, look inside it using MySQL uh, bin log tool. And uh, if we open some binary log file, what we will see? Uh, we will see it uh, contains uh, transaction data. Uh, raw, uh, it has raw changes inside it or simple uh, SQL statement. And each transa transaction in binary log is annotated with, uh, with a timestamp and a globally unique ID called GTIT. Uh, MySQL several tracks uh, all the GTs applied uh, to it. Uh, that's why it will not apply the same transaction twice. Uh, so the binary log looks uh, pretty suitable for point-in-time recovery. That's why we using uh, exactly binary log for this purpose. Okay, uh, suppose we have a single node MySQL server. Uh, in that case, uh, situation is pretty simple. We can just upload binary log uh, from our single node to the storage uh, using uh, WALG and uh, running uh, binary log archivation every 10 minutes, for, for, for example. Uh, we can use uh, cron scheduler to start while G uploading. Uh, but uh, situation changes uh, if we are running uh, high availability MySQL cluster with primary and second, secondary node. The problem is that uh, binary log files on the primary node differ from binary log files uh, on the secondary. Uh, during replication, secondary node reads uh, a binary log from uh, the primary one and uh, save it as relay log and then apply applies. Uh, but uh, secondary node uh, writes its own binary log uh, with different names, uh, with different uh, sizes, and uh, with different data in the files. Uh, can we just uh, use secondary, uh, can we just use uh, the binary log from the secondary node uh, as we, 
as we do with primary ones? The answer is yes, and uh, I try to explain why. Suppose we uh, encounter a failover. Uh, let's see on this picture. Uh, on this picture, we can see uh, MySQL primary node, secondary, and storage. Uh, first of all, we uploading uh, P1, P2, and P3 binary logs to the storage. But then uh, failover happens, and uh, MySQL primary is no longer available. Uh, we switch over to the secondary node and starting to uh, upload binary logs from the secondary node. So then we upload S1, S2 and S3 binary logs to the storage. But uh, uh, the data and uh, the transactions in S1 binary log are pretty old. Uh, they are approximately the same uh, as transaction in P2 binary log. So we have situation when we uploaded uh, uh, some transactions from the secondary after transactions we uploaded from the primary but actually transactions in S1 binary log happens before the transactions in P3 binary log. Uh, can we just replay all the binary logs uh, in the upload order? Yes, uh, because uh, binary log uh, contains global transaction IDs, uh, as I said uh, before. So, uh, MySQL will not apply transactions from S1 as uh, it's uh, tracked, it, it were already applied. MySQL tracks uh, GT IDs applied, so the, we can replay S1 binary log even after we replayed P3 binary log and everything, uh, everything will uh, go fine. So, uh, the main idea that uh, we can upload uh, binary log from the primary or secondary, uh, but we need to replay them in upload order, not uh, in the name, uh, not in the name of, uh, not in the order of the file names, but in the order of upload time to the storage. Okay. Uh, how the complete uh, backup and restore scenario looks like. Uh, the backup scenario, scenario uh, with Volgi is pretty simple. We need to run uh, Volgi backup push command every night, for instance, and we need to upload uh, binary log uh, with Volgi binary log uh, push command every minute or every 10 minutes, for instance. Uh, when we need to restore a cluster uh, or single node from the backup, uh, we uh, first of all we need to fetch uh, base backup using Volg backup fetch uh, command. Uh, we may specify latest uh, backup ID as a special keyword, or we may specify uh, some particular backup ID. During backup fetch, Volg reads uh, backup data from uh, storage and then prepares it. Uh, replay redo logs using extra backup. Uh, after that, we need to start MySQL server, and I recommend to start it on a different port number, not uh, three thousand uh, uh, three hundred six. Uh, when MySQL is running, we need to replay binary logs using uh, Volg bin log replay command. We specify since and until uh, options since uh, uh, latest backup and until some point in time. This command will replay all uh, binary logs in uh, uh, their upload order. Uh, after a play complete, we need to restart MySQL with production, com uh, with production config. Uh, 
And that's all we have uh, restored MySQL cluster. Uh, one more problem we encountered is that uh, replaying binary logs is pretty slow. Replaying binary logs is uh, running, uh, running the SQL query again, uh, but uh, unlike the production server that uh, can run uh, SQL queries uh, per, uh, in the many threads, during uh, point-in-time recovery, we run um, SQL queries uh, in single thread uh, and that's why uh, applying uh, binary logs is pretty slow. But here we uh, but there are some tricks uh, to speed up binary log replays, replay. Uh, we recommend you to disable all the logging uh, in INADB. We recommend you to disable double write buffer, uh, disable flush and redo logs, uh, uh, disable synchronizing by logs, and uh, disable scheduler to prevent MySQL to changing uh, the roles during uh, point in time recovery. And it's a good idea to start. Uh, MySQL server uh, on high port in order to hide it from your application until the recovery is complete. Uh, when uh, bin log replay is complete, you can uh, restart my MySQL with production server. Don't, don't uh, forget to change this setting to production one. Uh, some problems are left beyond the scope of the wall G. Uh, here, here is this problem. We need to choose uh, the node for backup. Uh, we have, uh, suppose we have three nodes uh, to running backup uh, in the MySQL cluster and we need to choose one. Uh, we don't waste resources backupping from the three nodes in the same time and we don't want to run backups on the stale replica. So we need to implement some algorithm for, for choosing the best replica for running base backup and we need to uh, keep other nodes uh, from uh, running backup. We use uh, DCS, Distributed uh, Consensus uh, System, uh, such as Zookeeper, uh, for this purpose, and the not running backup keep, uh, keep a lock on the Zookeeper during backup. Uh, we need to prevent somehow uh, crash master from uh, archiving binary logs. Uh, as I said, during a failover, we promote uh, some replica to become primary server, but we need to stop a crush it, a crush it node uh, from uploading binary logs. And uh, we have a rare, a rare situation with binary log name collision. Uh, I mean that uh, if we reset uh, binary log sequence uh, using reset master query uh, or during uh, uh, whole reset up the uh, replica host, the bin uh, binary log sequence start from the beginning and it will uh, uh, archiving, archiving binary log will rewrite uh, files in the storage. Uh, that is the problem we still need to solve somehow. But uh, despite of the uh, despite of these problems, uh, the whole solution works fine. We use uh, WallG for uh, archiving and restoring uh, MySQL uh, clusters in the Yandex Cloud. It's about uh, one thousand clusters and. Uh, one more than 1,000 uh, nodes, 
and it works fine fine so you can try it for your cluster and provide us your feedback uh, the next database uh, I'm going to talk it's Microsoft SQL Server well uh, SQL Server is pretty cool database with all batteries included uh, I mean uh, it has uh, built-in backup system that's uh, full featured it has uh, database backup uh, log backup incremental backup point in time recovery partition uh, partitional uh, backups and so on all possible features are already included in SQL server that's pretty cool and handy but uh, there is some problem uh, backup methods uh, Microsoft SQL Server is intended to run uh, on huge mainframes not not in the cloud uh, that's why uh, all backup methods are about uh, uh, archiving data to the disk uh, to the tape uh, and it's not very suitable uh, for cloud environment uh, modern SQL Server uh, versions uh, have new uh, backup methods backup to the uh, Azure uh, to the Azure blob storage uh, and uh, it needs to be said that uh, actually uh, Microsoft SQL Server can backup to the virtual devices it's pretty complex uh, method uh, requires to writing uh, uh, DLL library but it can be used also uh, let's start with backup to disk uh, it's pretty simple but uh, not suitable for cloud environment and that's why if we are using the same disk we store uh, we store the data um, the drawbacks are that additional space required additional IOPS required and we still need to upload backup to the storage <laughs> it's, it's pretty silly to keep backup on the same disk you, you keep uh, you store the data uh, we can use additional network disk for storing backup so on one disk we uh, store the data on the second disk we store backups it's possible but uh, network disks are maybe not so uh, maybe expensive and uh, we prefer to save uh, backups to the S3 storage not to the network disks that's why we uh, implement uh, we we use the last backup method uh, backupping to azure blob storage but we don't want to buy uh, azure uh, storage so we implemented azure uh, proxy in wallg uh, how it works we uh, start walg proxy on the same server we are running uh, Microsoft SQL server and uh, walg provides Azure protocol inside uh, inside Windows server so uh, Microsoft SQL server can use it as it use uh, uh, normal Azure storage but walg can save uh, the data in any uh, any uh, kind of storage it supports for instance as uh, free storage or sftp uh, server and so on uh, on uh, okay the idea is pretty simple uh, we need to implement uh, Azure protocol but uh, there are some problems with uh, making SQL server using uh, you uh, making SQL server to use this uh, proxy uh, SQL server is uh, pretty strict and uh, it 
makes a lot of validation uh, uh, when b uh, putting uh, the backup to the URL. It needs a real domain name, it uh, needs HTTPS protocol uh, and it supports only default HTTPS uh, port. So we can just uh, make it backup to local host for instance. We need to do some hacks. Uh, for instance, uh, we just uh, we, we need to create alias for local host and we need to put this alias to uh, hosts file. We need to create self-signed certificate uh, and we uh, make uh, the windows to trust this certificate. And we need to create credentials, uh, I mean Azure credentials for our endpoint. Uh, when all these hacks are done, we can use uh, URLs such as uh, HTTPS backup point local for uh, creating backups in SQL server, just like we uh, can do it with real Azure storage. Uh, okay, so we have two use cases. Uh, the first case is uh, flexibility. Uh, when we just start WALG as a background service with a common WALG proxy. Uh, in that case, WALG runs uh, all the time and uh, you have a permanent proxy uh, to the storage and uh, then you can just uh, backup your SQL server as, uh, as you would do with uh, disk or other storage, just, just run any uh, backup or storage command and it'll, it will work. Uh, the second case is using PG-like command line interface. You can create backups uh, with uh, command WALG backup push uh, or create log backups uh, or list backups and so on. Uh, if you're using uh, these uh, commands, WALG uh, does not ru run background all the time. It starts the proxy during uh, during ex uh, while executing this command and then it stops the proxy. Okay. Another one uh, slide about Microsoft SQL Server I would like to talk is uh, backupping multiple databases. Microsoft SQL Server uh, can, uh, of course it can, it contains uh, multiple databases and each database inside uh, server is independent from another one. Uh, I mean that uh, Microsoft SQL Server can backup and restore each database separately from the from the others. Uh, WALG uh, creates the backup of the whole server. Uh, during such a backup, all existing database uh, databases are backed and uh, put to the single WALG server backup. During a restore, all the database from the backup will be restored. But uh, you can also use a special minus D flag for your commands. Uh, and using, uh, uh, when using this flag, you can specify which uh, exactly database you want to backup or restore it. So uh, you can restore or backup the whole server or only single databases from this uh, server and it will work fine. Thank you.